Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together.com, the place to learn Game Maker Studio from beginner to expert. In this tutorial, I want to go over cameras in Game Maker Studio, and I want to cover as much as I can to give you a solid understanding of how cameras and viewports work and interact with each other and all of the options that you have without using any code at all. So this is all going to be done from the GUI, and I'm going to show you everything you can do. I'm going to give you some really useful links to look at scaling and resolution in your game, and it may be that this is actually everything you need in your project, depending on how complex it is. If you need to use code, then you can jump on to the next couple of videos where we're going to look at creating a camera with code. But if you're new to cameras, then definitely stay tuned and watch this video because a solid understanding will be extremely helpful. So let's just dive in. All right, so what we're going to tackle in this video is how to use cameras without code. To do so, I just have a player set up here with some movement code and a script for collision checking on the block and I have a room set up here with the blocks inside of it. So if you run your game without any cameras, then the entire room that you're in shows up and it looks like this. So this is how I can move right now. And most of the time, this isn't what you're actually going to want because the room that you're using is going to be a lot larger than what you want to show on your screen. And if you're using smaller sprites, say 16 by 16 or 32 by 32, uh, depending on the size of the room, you really want the camera to be zoomed in so that the quality of it looks a lot nicer and that they're actually visible instead of being very small sprites in a very large room. So over here on the left, we have a couple of options. You've got the layers, which we don't need to worry about, so I'm gonna minimize those. You have the instance layer properties, and this is just where I put all of the instances. Again, we can ignore that. What we want is down here in room settings. So if we open up this tab down here, viewports and cameras, this opens up everything that we're gonna be doing right now. So the first thing is that you have to enable viewports. Without this, nothing gets seen and you won't, even if you set up a camera, nothing will happen. So this one here must be ticked. Then you can go into any of the viewports that you want and then select them and set it to be active. Now there are eight viewports here, so you can have eight different objects, eight different cameras open and running at the exact same time. So this allows for eight split screens if you wanted to do that, or one massive screen with a lot of overlays, or you can just use one of them and that's fine. For a lot of my projects and courses that I've done, I've just used one camera and that's completely fine. A lot of times you just don't need more than that. So I'm gonna open up viewport zero. Traditionally you start with zero and you work your way down as you add more. The other thing that you must do now is set this viewport to visible. If you don't do that, then this white rectangle will not show up, and if it doesn't show up, then it's not working. So if you untick it, it goes away. If you click visible, but then disable viewports, it goes away. All right, so these two have to be enabled. Then from there, you've got camera properties, viewport properties, the object that it's following, and then a couple of more options down here. So let's go over them, and I'm gonna show you what they actually do by changing them and then actually running the game. So by default, this is what it's going to look like. 540 by 360, and the viewport is 1024 by 768. And it's following my OBJ player, which I'm not sure if that's the default. I think it's usually none. I didn't think I did anything with this project, but maybe I did. But you can select the object that is here, and then if you run it, this is now what we're gonna be able to see inside of our room. So our game window is this size, which really hasn't changed at all. But now you can see that this is how much of the room we're seeing. No longer are we seeing the entire thing, it's just a small section. So this rectangle is how much we're seeing. Now you saw right there that when we moved around, the camera only moved when we were essentially right on the edge of the camera. And most of the time, you're not going to want that. Depending on the game that you're doing, if it's a platformer, like this kind of looks like it, you really want your player to be able to see ahead of them at all times. So down here is horizontal and vertical borders. 
and that is how close do I have to get to the camera in order for it to start moving. And these you normally want to be fairly large values. You set them to the actual camera itself and then it will, the camera will just always be exactly centered on the player. So let's try that. The horizontal border I'll set to 540 and the vertical border I'll set to 360. If we run that, now our player will be exactly centered except when we're on the edge of the screen. So if I move here, nothing happens. If I jump though, something does happen. So I'm right on the edge and the camera will not show the void that is nothing over here. So if we come over here now though, now you can see that it's exactly centered on the player and wherever I go, it's right there. So a lot of times that's what you're gonna actually want. So this horizontal border, if you set it to equal or greater than the width of your camera, then it will center it. Now the speed over here, horizontal and vertical speed, are how quickly the camera will follow the player. So negative one just means instantly. So it's gonna snap directly to where the player is. If we change it to something like two on both of these, then now it's actually going to move with the player, but at a much slower speed. You can see here that the camera starts up top and now it's come all the way over here to find me. And I can actually move outside of the camera because it's going too slow. And this is a fixed speed of two all the time. If you set it up to something like 10, that gets going really fast, but it still allows the camera to actually move, as you can see. You're pretty much gonna be centered unless you start falling or moving really, really fast but it allows you the camera to actually move over to the object in a really cool panning kind of way. So that's speed, horizontal and vertical speed. I'm gonna set it to negative one so that we have it instantaneously back there. And now let's take a look at the camera and viewport. The viewport is what I wanna talk about first because that's the actual window of our game. So if I run this, the window that you see here, this is 1024 by 768. Depending on the resolution of your monitor, this might be larger or smaller that you're looking at. So I have a 1920 by 1080 monitor, which is commonly referred to as 1080p. So it looks about half of the size. If I were to bring it over here, and you know, it's about half the size because my width is 1920 and my height is 1080 on my monitor. So if you change this, I'm gonna change this to 1920 by 1080, this will actually make my viewport fill up the screen completely. But you can kind of start seeing that my square is a little squished. And that's because my rectangle, my camera that I have right here, is not playing very nicely with my viewport. It is trying to match a width of 540 by 360 to 1920 by 1080. It's trying to upscale that. And if we look at the math, that math just isn't going to work. So if we look at 540 multiplied by three, that's 1620. But if we multiply it by four, now we've gone over. And it's gonna be the same thing for the height and the height of the camera and the viewport. They're just not going to line up as nicely as you're going to want. So when you're doing this, your camera and your viewport, if they're not divisible by each other, if they're not resolution friendly, like 16 by nine or four by three, then you're going to be in trouble. So let me show you what that looks like even worse. So if we were to change this to 360 by 540, this is going to skew our game much, much more. So now you can see that our squares, our instances and our objects are actually still correct. So those work correctly, but now our camera and our viewport are way, way off. And so things look very strange. So I'm gonna put a link in the description to this thread right here on the Game Maker community. This member, Ranger X, lays out some really great tips and also how to do the scaling so that it always looks good. It has some really good instructions here. And he also links to the blog from YoYo -Yo Games on scaling for different devices. So those two blogs are also really worth reading. So this whole thread you can find on their community. It's called How to Properly Scale Your Game. And I'm not gonna worry about that too much right now, but it is something to consider. 
What I want to do though is change these to just a number that's fairly friendly to what we want to use. And an easy way to do that is to just take your width and your height and divide them by a number. So I'm going to take my width of 1920, divide that by three, I get 640. So I'm going to plug that in to my width. So I know that those are going to be compatible. The height, 1080 divided by three is 360. So now that's what the rectangle looks like and it should look just the way we want it to. Nothing should be skewed now, okay? That is really nice. Once you get further along in your game and you have to start thinking about resizing your game and being able to full size your screen or if you have it on a mobile device and a Switch and an Xbox, like all of those are going to be different devices that you have to scale your game to properly. So definitely check out that link that I'm going to leave you to how to scale your game if you're already at that stage. But that is how you use the camera and the viewports. So that's basically everything you need to know to use cameras without code. The other things that we didn't cover here are the X and Y position of your camera. This just moves it inside of the level. And most of the time, it's actually going to be following some object. So it's going to snap to it either instantly with a negative one value or move there with a value greater than zero. So the X and Y position, I really don't ever find myself using the GUI for, because even though it's right there, it's going to actually be over here when the game starts. And then the X and Y position on the viewports actually change what's being shown on your camera. So if we change the X to 300 and the Y to 300, you can't see it in here, but now this whole chunk over here is actually going to be shifted over. So if we run it, now our viewport is going to be really strange. So you can see that everything is still there. We just have a huge chunk of black 300 pixels on X and the Y over there. So uh, you really don't ever need to do anything with this. I'm going to show you how to do things in code starting in the next video and that's when we're actually going to start adjusting things like the X and Y properties of all of these because once you have full control over it in code you can set all of these properties and more while the game is running because the limitation of doing it with the GUI right here is that you can't change anything so after the game begins this is what your game is going to look like. You're not going to be able to change the camera or the viewport. You're very limited. Sometimes that's totally fine. If you have a simple game or if your game is always just going to have the exact same camera, then you'll be totally fine and that's okay. But for a lot of other games, you need something a little more complex. So we're going to look at how to create cameras and code in the next video. The other thing that I want to point out though that is sometimes overlooked is that your cameras are normally set, if you're doing it in the GUI, it's set on the first room you go into. So a lot of times you're going to want to have a room, like an initiation room, I call it room init, and you're going to want to set the camera up inside of here exactly the way you want it. So if I set my viewport visible and enabled, if I set my viewport to 10, 1920 by 1080 here, then I'll be good to go. And then anything I set over here actually won't even matter. So I'll set it to 200 by 200 over here. And in the creation code, I'll just say room go to room zero. So as soon as room init starts, which it's the first room, we're going to go to room zero. And let's see what happens if we have room zero have a totally different viewport. You see that it doesn't do anything. Because the first room you're in, the camera, if it's through the GUI, is already being set. So a lot of times you want to have a room init, and you take care of setting all of it up properly, at least the viewport. The camera can still change from room to room, but the viewport you need to set up in room init. All right? So if I delete that, and then I run it, now this is the first room that runs, and my viewport is going to be 200 by 200, which is not at all what I want. <laughs> okay, that is everything I can think of for cameras right now and how to get up and running with cameras in your game, no code required at all. 
Like I said, you can have multiple viewports in here and you can see that now there's two rectangles if you add more views. If you do that, then you just have to set up where it's actually at using the viewport properties. That gets a little more complicated and if you're gonna be doing that, then you probably want to just start doing it with code because you have a lot more flexibility of adding it and taking it off and moving it around. You can do split screen and a lot of other things with the GUI right here, but you're still limited and it becomes really, really hard if you have drop in, drop out split screen play, or if you want it to follow a different object, it's just not possible doing it in the GUI. So what we're gonna look at in the next video, like I've said, is how to create a camera through code and then how to set some of those properties with the functions that GameMaker has built in. To make sure that you see that video, click on the subscribe and then the bell icon and ring it so that you get notified of all my future videos, including the ones in this series. If you enjoyed this video and you like my content, please leave a like, I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more Game Maker tutorial courses from me, check out my website at letslearnthistogether.com where you can go from beginner, no experience in programming at all, to an expert by the end of the three courses on there. And while you're there, check out my podcast where I get to talk with real developers from all over the industry. As I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.